You can do a lot with rice in the Philippines, and for us, it's considered a staple. But most of the time, it's actually used as a side dish. But there are a few dishes that actually use it as a main ingredient in the dish. Today, I'm going to show you how to make machang, which is kind of like a rice dumpling, and I'm going to show you how to make a rice tamale. <music> Now, if you're here for the cooking and the recipes, feel free to skip through this whole part and go straight to the time codes that I'll flash on the screen so you can go straight to that. But if you're interested in learning about the origins of these dishes, then listen on. Food in the Philippines is a testimony to all the different cultures that have influenced our great nation over the past couple of centuries. If you look at something like machang, it's probably a dish that you've seen in dim sum restaurants. It's usually sticky. Uh, rice um, that is packed in some sort of leafy parcel and stuffed with a dizzying amount of ingredients that you can find in there. Now, if you trace back its roots and kind of look at our neighboring countries, you have China that has the Hokkien bak chang, which is very similar, except it uses mostly bamboo leaf. Um, in Mandarin parts of China, you have Zongxi, which is also a rice, a sticky rice dumpling. If you look further around in Thailand, they have Bajang, and in Vietnam, for example, they have Ban Jiu. Um, these are all very, very similar. So it makes sense that one dish, I don't know, tried by a certain person in a certain country, it then travels with that person and then gets applied to whatever the local culture and whatever the local ingredients are. In a similar vein of blurred cultural lines, we have the tamales. So tamales are usually found in Mexico or other parts of South America, but we also do have them in the Philippines. We were once colonized by Spain and Mexico was also once colonized by Spain. So there was a galleon trade at one point, um, I think, started in the 1500s, so 16th century onwards. Um, and obviously there was a lot of exchanges between the two countries. Apparently, tequila would not have been born without the stills that were used to make coconut wine or lambanog in the Philippines that were then transported by Filipino sailors to Mexico. That's a whole other video. So just like any new dish accepted by culture, it needs to be localized based on the ingredients that are locally available. So instead of corn masa, they were using ground rice. Instead of lard, they were using coconut cream or milk for the fat. And finally, instead of the corn husks for the wrapper, they were using banana leaves. Now, depending on where you go in the Philippines, the fillings and the toppings that you'll find in the different tamales will be very, very different. Top of mind, you're probably thinking Pampanga because it's probably the most famous one with two different layers of rice dough, one being slightly on the redder orangey side because of the use of anato seeds or a chuete, um, and then with the regular rice dough, and that's topped with chicken, eggs, um, some sort of chorizo most of the time. But if you go down to Cavite, not too far away, Way, you also have a version where they use a really kind of like sweet peanut paste that's absolutely delicious. We featured that in one of our old videos before, but you can also find it in places like Bulacan, you can find it in Samar, you can find it in the Visayas region, and all of them, even some of them will actually use corn husks, so all of them will be very different. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I thought today would be cool if I did my own mashup of a Filipino style tamales. Again, it's not an authentic recipe. I'm just doing it with what's locally available to me here um, and what I want to taste and what I want the outcome to be. You'll find lots of recipes for Filipino tamales and most of them will show you how to make the dish using rice flour. Yes, this is possible, but traditionally it was made with ground rice, so let's do that. Soak medium rice grains overnight in some water. The next day, strain it and then place it in a food processor. You want to grind this until the rice is very fine and kind of feels like wet sand, just like this. For the orange tinge in traditional tamales that we have here in the Philippines, people will mix a natto or a chuete seeds in some hot water. These don't bring much flavor, they'll just change the color of the rice. I'm not a fan of coloring food, be it natural or not, so I thought for my version, I'm just gonna make a very tasty anatta oil. Take a pan out on low heat, place in your seeds, add in a bunch of aromatics, chicken skin, garlic, red onions, chilies, lemongrass, and ginger. Mix all of it together and cover it with oil. At this point, you can turn off the fire and let everything just sit together for about an hour. It'll give this oil a really delicate, savory flavor. 
once done, just strain everything through a fine sieve. Time for the meat. In a pot of boiling water, add in some bone-in chicken thighs and some chopped red onions. You can also just use half a chicken if you want. Bring this to a boil, season it with salt, and just simmer for an hour. After that, separate the broth from the chicken. Don't throw away the broth, we're still gonna use that. And quickly debone the chicken and just chop it all up. Next step in your anata oil, fry some red onions, shredded carrots, and sliced up chorizo. Cook this for about five minutes before adding your chopped chicken. Season this with some salt if needed. For the peanut butter, very simple. Place your peanuts in a food processor and process them until well they become a paste. The oils eventually will come out, so just be patient and keep scraping down the sides. Only once it has formed the right consistency should you consider adding either salt or sweeten it depending on your preference. I added a little bit of sugar. All our elements are pretty much ready, so we can go ahead and cook the rice. Place your rice paste in a pot and top it all off with the broth. You're gonna cook this like a polenta, so you just need to keep stirring it to make sure you don't get any lumps. After this workout, your biceps will be massive because it is quite tiring. For a little bit of flavor, you can add some anato oil here as well. To finish it off, a little bit of coconut cream. My cream had frozen solid, so I had to grate it. FYI, don't ever do this. To get an extra fine paste, you can also run this through the food processor one more time. Now that all our elements are ready, grab a banana leaf and remove its spine. I like to singe these before using them because they become more pliable. Place your rice paste on a leaf and top it with your chicken mixture, some salted egg, and your peanut paste. Fold this like an envelope and just make sure it's properly sealed. I ended up wrapping these about three times in three different leaves. This goes in a steamer for 15 minutes and ideally you have a bigger one than I do so that your tamales can actually stand upright versus being horizontally laid down. If you wanna be really, really naughty, you can drench these in that oil I keep talking about. Yes, it's that good. Now for the machang, I thought it'd be really cool to cook it with like a coconut style spicy adobo and then use some mungo inside as well. So very different from what you'd consider your authentic machang if there's even such a thing, um, but really tasty and very kind of like true to Filipino flavors, which I think will work really well in the final result. We're gonna start off by marinating our pork belly. Very simple Filipino adobo mix. Dark soy sauce, light soy sauce, coconut vinegar, black peppercorns, bay leaves, a couple of pieces of crushed garlic, and some sugar. That's gonna sit right next to your soaking mung beans and your soaking glutinous rice in the fridge overnight. The next day, fry off some onions and garlic until fragrant. Place in your strained glutinous rice and season with soy sauce, oyster sauce, and sesame oil. You want every grain to become brown. For the pork, get a pan out, fry off some garlic, render out that fat from your pork for about 10 minutes, and then add in some of your marinating liquid and coconut cream. To take it up a notch, throw in some bird's eye chilies and let that bubble away for 10 minutes. All our elements are pretty much ready. Cut up your banana leaves and make sure to run them over an open flame to clean them and make them easier to handle. Now these are frozen banana leaves, so they are a little more delicate, but it should be easier with the fresh ones if you can get them. Make a cone shape with the leaf and make sure it's double sealed at the tip. Stuff with layers of rice, mung beans, and your pork mix. 
wrap it up twice, and then tie it together with some string. See, the first time I did this, I was struggling with the string. Second time, I made sure that the string was actually tied to my tripod in front of me, so it was easier to get it nice and taut. Remember that you'll be boiling these, so it's really important that they're nice and tight and that they don't have too much contact with the water. So I cooked one batch in a steamer for two hours and it really wasn't what I expected. It ended up not feeling like sticky rice and was a little dryish, which was very disappointing. So for the second run, what I did was just boil it in a large pot of salted water, completely submerged for almost three hours. And the result, well, it speaks for itself. Okay, this is the moment of truth. It is always so terrifying opening these things to make sure that hopefully this time I got it right. Um, so like I was saying, the first time I wasn't happy with kind of the texture, it felt too dry for me. Um, so I think by boiling it, well... Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. Whoa. That is gorgeous. That is exactly what I was going for. You can see the surprise in my face. Night and day. Like, I'm so happy I decided to make this recipe again because this looks gluey, which is exactly what I wanted. Oh. And I was able to, to kind of adjust some taste stuff as well. Um, so I'm gonna take some nice pretty shots of this and then we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. Just cut. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going crazy because I started this morning at 7 a.m. and I was just so stressed because I just, I don't know, couldn't figure out a couple recipes and then the two recipes that I finally ended up doing just worked beautifully. And oh, that is exactly what I was looking for. Look at that. I don't, know, I don't even know if that close up's rolling. But that is beautiful. It's kind of like gooey and unctuous. And the mongo, for me, just kind of adds a nice little Filipino touch in there. Let's try it. Night and day. Time for the pork. Whew. <laughs> this is why boiling it made all the difference. Look how tender that pork is. I can shred it with my fingers. That's how tender it is. It's really hot. That is a winning recipe. I really, really hope you try this one. I messed it up for you, so you guys can do it right at home. This is the part that you guys probably don't see a lot in cooking videos. <laughs> But yeah, the thing is, you know, when you, especially when you're making Filipino food, which is which is food that's not necessarily very known um, around the world, you know, I want to try to represent it as as best as I can in terms of getting those authentic flavors out. Um, and so you kind of just go off the cuff in terms of recipes. There are no recipes really to follow, especially for dishes like these. Um, the the recipes I found for tamales had a lot of shortcuts to it. Um, so you kind of just you know, try to not invent it, but go on what makes sense traditionally and then trust your instinct and your gut. So you end up kind of doing these recipes one, two, three, four times, doing all the dishes for it, going back to the supermarket to buy all the ingredients you need. So it's a long, long process, uh, which is why a while ago, like when you open these little presents, it just makes you feel um, really good that you successfully made something that when you taste it, taste, Filipino to you. It's not necessarily very authentic in terms of how I made it or the, the liberties I took with the ingredients, but the flavor is there, um, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, and I hope you guys try the recipes. Now I've got tons of dishes to do. 